Good morning, everyone. My name is Giovanni Gerdovic. I work at SUSE. And this is an atypical presentation because we are going to have two guest speakers um, who are not professional kernel developers. The, um, the title, or oh, let me pull up the, the title slides. Um, how do you click? Like this. Um, the, the slides is uh, um, SCAD Underground. Can you see it? Custom skets, that, yeah. that's the one. Uh, yeah, the title is, hey, psst, try this. The underground culture around custom CPU schedulers. Um, my, uh, the speakers, I am only a facilitator in this meeting, the speakers are hopefully on the line because they are um, Alfred Chen, uh, who you see listed as an author um, from China, and Masahito Suzuki from Japan. I um, gave them the exact time of our talk, but that was 20 minutes ago. So I, we ha oh, thank you. Oh, guys. Oops. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Oh, that's me. Can you see? Me? All right. So, um, hello, Alfred. Hello, Masahito. Um, thank you very much for uh, being patient, and. Uh, um, and waiting on the line, uh, so I, I will pull up my notes and begin the talk proper. So, um, uh, so the, we are, we're going to talk about out of, uh, out of three schedulers, which is not something related to SCADEX directly, but is related in some way because SCADEX has uh, a technology to implement, uh, uh, to, to, to implement custom schedulers uh, um, could bridge this gap between uh, uh, niche projects uh, like uh, the one that we, we we're about to see and the mainstream uh, Linux uh, community. Uh, the friends from the Cache OS uh, Linux distribution, which are Petr and Piotr here in the audience, helped me uh, discover uh, those uh, relatively popular uh, CPU schedulers, which I didn't know they exist. Um, they are called uh, Bore from uh, Masahito and uh, 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 BMQ and PDS from, uh, from Alfred. So uh, together with me are their authors, Alfred Chen and Masahito Suzuki. Um, Alfred, how are you? Uh, hello, hello. Uh, Giovanni, I'm fine. Um, good to see you. Great, great, good to see you too. And uh, um, Masahito, um, good evening. It's, uh, it's uh, late uh, in Japan, um, also in, uh, in China with Alfred Dees. Uh, so how, how, everything all right, Masahito? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Oh. I, I'm, I'm happy, oh, please, please. Awesome, awesome. Um, so let me introduce, uh, uh, give you a, a brief biography of, uh, of them. So Alfred lives in the city of Guangzhou in the south of China. He used to be a software developer in the network and communication industry. Uh, he enjoys uh, system programming and open source activity in his free time as a hobby. Um, um, uh, he has been uh, working for over 10 years over on this uh, project that he will uh, show us today. Um, uh, first with the priority and deadline based skip list multiple queue CPU scheduler, which uh, for short is called PDS. And later with the BMQ scheduler, which stands for bitmap queue. He is now developing both of them under the umbrella name of uh, project C. For the last four years, Alfred, uh, Alfred, the Project C by Alfred has been a mentoring organization at the Open Source Promotion Plan, which is a program organized by the Nanjing Institute of Technology in China, and it's very similar to the Google Summer of Code. Is that right, Alfred? Did I forget anything? Yes, yes that's, that's correct. correct. And, and for the name of uh, a PDS, it's now uh, skip list based. So, uh, so I, 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 I have read that in, in my presentation later. 
because they, as we, Alfred explained me when I, I was asking him question about the schedule that the main data structure using the PDS is uh, changed from skip list to uh, this other data structure he calls B, uh, bitmap queue, but skip list is still in the name. So PDS, but the S uh, is uh, not justified anymore since the recent refactoring that he did. Uh, now Masahito, Masahito works in the IT industry in a man management capacity. He is a software developer by passion and uh, writes code in his free time as a hobby. He is from the city of Niigata in Japan, which is 300 kilometers uh, north of Tokyo. He is the author of the Bore Scheduler, which stands for Bus Burst Oriented Response Enhancer. Bore or Bore is the uh, default scheduler in the Cache OS uh, uh, Linux distribution, which is an Arch Linux uh, derivative uh, with a large and growing user base of Linux enthusiasts, uh, as we will see in the next presentation by Peter and Piotr. Um, um, so, uh, did I miss anything, Masahito, uh, in your biography? Everything okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Um, so, um, uh, we will. Uh, um, so, how, uh, Masahito, can you can you start uh, and tell us um, uh, something about uh, your work about Bore? Uh, I can give you a presenter in the, in the B, uh, BBB platform. Are you going to, to do this live, right? You don't have a recording, Masahito? Well, I, I do not have, have a uh, recording. I, I'm going to talk. To I'll do it okay. live, and I will pass you the yes. presenter uh, uh, privilege in the app, OK? I'm going to do it right now. And so you can move to the next slide. You don't have to tell me next slide, next slide. You can move it yourself, okay. right? I'm going to okay. do it. Just a, just a second. Um, I, would I would like, like to, to express my gratitude uh, to Giovanni Gadovich of SUSE for proposing me the opportunity to speak at this conference today. And additionally, I want to thank Linus Torvalds and many other pioneers who have been involved in Linux development over the past decades, uh, particularly Ingo Mona from the mainline schedule team, also ha uh, Hamed Salim Al Mari, uh, who is not there today. Uh, he introduced me to scheduler development, uh, like in 2021. Um, so Peter Jung and Vladimir Nepogodin, Piotr Borski, and all the members of the Cashios community uh, for their immense contributions. So you guys are so amazing. So today, uh, I will be discussing the burst-oriented response enhancer. Uh, so-called bore scheduler modification. Uh, well, like many desktop Linux fans, I have been a long time user of alternative schedulers aimed at improving desktop responsiveness. I remember various at attempts such as Concolivas's RSDL and BFS, MUQSS, and legendary guy, Alfred Chen's PDS and BMQ, and uh, the Cache Scheduler family by Hamed Salim al Mari. Uh, I used to use all these modifications and appreciated them a lot. But in fact, I would always end up returning to CFS, the completely fair scheduler, because the reason for this is uh, that CFS being sophisticated, straightforward, uh, generally performs pretty well and continues to be improved by many researchers from around the world. Although the, the, the original CFS had some weakness. Uh, in fact, if you overlooked those, uh, it, it provided good performance generally across a wide range of use cases. Uh, the aim of Bohr, uh, well, sorry, here, uh, is to maintain as much good character of the base scheduler in this case, CFS and EEVDF as possible while improving its handling of case it originally str struggles and to ensure good responsiveness across more versatile use cases. The development of war began as an improvement to CFS today. The mainline scheduler, although um, has been updated to EEVDF and war is also compatible with it today. So one of week, uh, weakness uh, of the mainline scheduler was that due to its weight-based fair scheduling, 
responsiveness could easily be compromised by tasks with heavily uh, computational loads. The, well, the, the, the fundamental idea behind BOR is similar to many other schedulers that aim to improve the responsiveness of interactive tasks, greedy ones get less. The concept I adopted is called burst time. This measures how long a task has been trying to consume CPU time since it last slept, waited for IO or yielded. This burst time is then well, log two transformed into a burst score. As the burst time increasing uh, exponentially, the task's weight decreases accordingly. This makes uh, that tasks that quickly yield CPU time maintain high priority, while tasks that engage uh, in continuous computation receive penalties and quickly become relatively weaker and weaker, achieving some sort of equilibrium uh, between various types of workloads in system. Mm, when a task releases CPU time as well uh, as resetting uh, the burst time, the history of its burst score is smoothed using an approach similar to uh, exponentially weighted moving average, or some, uh, which mitigates the, the impact of sudden spikes in burst times. Additionally, when tasks are forked, the existing scores of other tasks are taken into account considering the the topology of the task tree. Other modifications include automatic calculation of optimal base size and also some adjustments to uh, placement calculations upon task wake-ups. I observed that some of the, the idea seems to be taken into upstream changes recently. Through these changes, BOR is designed to maintain high responsiveness even under workloads that uh, the base scheduler struggles with without sacrificing its inherent performance benefits. So now you're going to see how it performs. Hi everyone, I'm Epic Chen with Project C. It's my honor to join this conference. I'm the main developer of Project Seed and the author of two CPU schedulers in Project C. Firstly, let's have a brief introduction about Project C. Project C goes from my personal development blog about 10 years ago, and now it is hosted in GitLab. The project is committed to developing and maintaining alternative CPU scheduling algorithm for the Linux kernel. In the name of Project Seed, C stands for course. It's the compilation of two CPU schedulers in the project. Those two algorithms are BMQ, BMQ scheduler, and the PDS, priority and deadline-based scheduler. Currently, our development is based on the latest Linux kernel bench, and we provide it all in one single Linux kernel patch. We also support the last two long-term support Linux kernel benches. Project C has participated in open source activities for example, though we have participated in the OSPP event since 2021. This activity mainly to provide the annual updates for the long-term support Linux kernels. That's all for this page. Let's turn to the next page. In this page, we will have a brief instruction about BMQ and PDS schedulers. BMQ is a simple scheduler Linux implementation which uses the BMQ data structure. It is inspired by the CPU scheduling algorithm in the Zircon kernel of the Google Fusion system. 
highlighted the feature that for the BMQR. Firstly, the bitmap code that is use the bitmap for the uh, availability state of the doubling the code. And the uh, bitmap code is uh, an efficiency data structure to provide the insert and delete operations. Second, the boost priority design, which provide the dynamic priority adjustment up on the static task priority. PDS is a virtual deadline based CPU scheduling algorithm, which is deeply involved from the BFS algorithm. Actually, it has longer history than the BMQ, and it used to be implemented with the skip list data structure. But now it is using the BMQ data structure, just like the BMQ scheduler. Highlighted design in the PDS is the moving time slot design, which links between the task virtual deadline to the BMQ uh, data structure. In project seed, BMQ and PDS share most common scheduling codes. These are also the very important parts of these two schedulers. I would like to highlight the improvement comparing to the mainline scheduler code in the Linux kernel. First improvement is the task wake up and how to choose a CPU to run on. The second improvement is the task selection in CPU contents switch. The third improvement is the CPU load balance. That is for the long exist high hyperstrat CPU and the hybrid process in the recent years. For example, the performance core and the efficiency core the currently in the Intel and the AMD CPUs. And the last improvement is the scalability when CPU number grows up. That's all for my sharing about Project C, BMQ, and the PDS schedulers today. Thank you.